Hello, beautiful ladies, and welcome to the first episode of The Scoop. I have been thinking about creating a series on my channel called The Scoop. When I was in high school, we used to have morning announcements, and I used to get up in the mornings and I was in charge of announcing the school play which I was in, and I would get up and I would make a small announcement. Well, over time, that turned into me giving small performances each morning to get people to attend the performances, and then it turned into something else entirely. My best friend at the time and I made something called The Scoop. We asked the administration, got permission, and each morning we would get up and we would give a fact and a tidbit, and we would call it, here's the scoop, we're giving you guys the info for the day. And it would usually just be something random and funny. And it was our way of bringing a little bit of joy to our fellow classmates every morning. Well, now I'm bringing the scoop to you guys. I'm really excited to do something similar to the scoop with you because I'm not gonna be doing just the fact and the tidbit sort of thing, but I am planning on bringing you a little bit of joy each week where we can talk a little bit more casually than the other videos on my channel, where I can give you a few updates of things that I've seen, things I've been doing, and we can just kind of catch up in the comments. I'm really excited about this because it's nice for me to just kind of catch up and talk with you guys. It's sort of like a chatty coffee talk if we were all at a coffee shop together. This is kind of what that would be like. And so I'm really excited to just share this time with you guys in a little bit more laid back of a way. First, I wanna talk about a pop culture thing I saw this week. So Taylor Swift released an album just kind of out of the blue. <laughs> she decided to announce that her album was releasing at midnight and it was going to be a big event and she was also going to release one music video. So here's the thing with me and Taylor Swift, you guys probably know, I used to be a big fan of hers. She kind of fell out of favor with me when she started becoming more and more of an SJW. I wasn't a huge fan of her music as it changed from country to pop anyways, but then when she started talking very very openly about her politics and really alienating a big part of her fan base, I was just not interested in listening to her music anymore. So when I saw this was coming out, I was a little bit interested just because, oh, it kind of came out of the blue and how did she get all of this done during quarantine? But she did film this music video, which I watched. All I'm gonna say about the music video is that it was very pretty. I thought it was very beautiful to look at and the music was fine, it was okay. And it felt very cottage core to me. That's kind of a term I see floating around on the internet a lot, so <laughs> it was kind of warm and inviting until you get to the middle part of the music video where she's uh, in the water and it seems like she might drown. <laughs> Besides that, it was very pretty. And I'm curious to know what you guys think about Taylor Swift, if you were excited to see that she dropped a new album. Again, I'm not super excited about it. I might check it out and see if there are any tracks that I like, but the fact of the matter is she kind of alienated me a while back when I saw her documentary for Netflix called Miss Americana. I was not a big fan of that. And so I wasn't super interested in her new release, but it is something that's in the zeitgeist. So I am curious to know your guys' thoughts on that. Next up, let's talk about a news item. So there was a photo that went pretty viral of a naked woman sitting on the street showing off her body and uh, her nakedness to a group of police officers as a protest. And it was deemed iconic by many people. So I do have some thoughts on that. <laughs> I don't know what nudity has to do with any of this. I mean, you can create a story about that, but honestly, it doesn't have to do with this. It's not useful. It's just kind of like, oh, look at me, look at what I did, and it'll make a great photo op. And my first thought when I looked at that photo was that I would think of that as sexual harassment. If a man were to do the same thing, sit on the ground and flash a group of police officers, it would be harassment. Of course, police officers know what they signed up for, so it's not necessarily a legal issue, but a man flashing people should be the same as a woman flashing people. And for the media to call this a really newsworthy item and it was incredibly iconic and she's making such a great statement, to me was not accurate. <laughs> I looked at that and I thought, I don't know what you're protesting. I don't know what your point is here. And it doesn't seem to me like you're actually making a difference this way. This isn't really an argument. It's just you posing nude. So the idea that this would be iconic is silly to me. And I'm not a huge proponent of going out nude on the street as a form of protest. Maybe that's just me, but <laughs> let me know in the comments what you guys think. <laughs> So I also wanted to share some things I've been thinking about this week, just things that I've been learning and kind of sorting through. And I made this video about classic not being perfect. And I kind of wanted to share a little bit more 
about that story. So when I came to my husband, it was really because I felt like the housework had gotten away from me. And the reason that my housework has gotten away from me is because I have been putting in a lot more time with my work. I've been making four videos a week. I have been producing a ton of content and it's just a big undertaking. And I've just been finding that my time for housework and just even spending time with my husband has gotten a lot less. And it is something that we're constantly talking about, right? This work-life balance thing that feels so difficult. And I've had this issue before, so it's not like it's a big surprise, but it is something that I feel like is gonna just constantly be coming up. And it's something that I think as a community of women we can talk about because I know that I would love to have that really good work-life balance. It's really important to me and it's something that I also said in a video about success for women is that work-life balance, is finding out what does work and making time for the things that you care about. So it's an interesting thing that I'm starting to experience that now because I know I wanna spend time with my husband. I know I wanna get the housework done. I'm one of those people, let me know in the comments if you're like this, I have a hard time having mental brain space if my house is cluttered. If the house is cluttered, it feels like my mind is cluttered. And so I really like keeping the house clean. So when the housework gets away from me, it actually really does bother me. It's something that kind of gets in my way and I feel like I've, let myself down and then I'm just not as productive. <laughs> and so it is something that I've been trying to work on, this balance of the things that I am working on and then the lifestyle that I wanna have. And I know it's only gonna get more intense at the time that my husband and I do decide to have children. So <laughs> I'm sure this is only a tiny little sliver of what it's gonna look like in the future. <laughs> but I guess that's just part of life because I know that my husband has the same struggle. He has work and he needs to make time for his life too so that he has that good balance and he can help me with the chores or he can take over dinner some nights. But the fact of the matter is I don't really love when he cooks dinner because I feel like that is something I love to do. So when he does that, I always feel like, ah, oh, that's something that matters to me and I didn't want him to have to do that. So that's, that's what I've been feeling lately. And so I'm sure that this is something that I'll just keep working on. And I know that I waste a little bit of time in little pieces all day. So I think I could probably get better about that. But if you guys have any ideas, tips and tricks for when you're working from home, having that work-life balance, I'd really love to hear your guys' thoughts. I'll of course keep sharing how I think I can grow and be better about that, but I'd love to hear your guys' opinions too. So leave it in the comments. Lastly, I just wanna talk about some things I've been reading and some things I've been watching. So as far as what I've been reading, I've actually been reading the Dummies Guide to Buying a Puppy. So don't get ahead of yourselves here. <laughs> I am not buying a puppy as of yet, but at some point in the future, Jacob and I would like to get a dog. And I know that I feel really stressed about it. And I think it's because I never grew up with animals at all. So I really don't have any experience with it. And I'm somebody who's like, okay, I want to know what each stage is gonna look like. I want to know how I can best prepare and not having any idea of how it works and how much time I would need to spend with the puppy. And if it's okay, if the puppy's whining, all of that kind of stuff, that is stuff I'm trying to learn before we do get a dog in the future. And so I've been reading this book. It's just the dummies book on getting a puppy. and. It is really helpful so far. It's been giving good tips and advice. I also was looking up some things online because, sorry, I do tend to do this. When it's something I'm interested in, I tend to kind of do a lot of research. <laughs> but I did find this really good piece of advice for the future. So you guys tell me if this makes sense. The idea is that when you're crate training a puppy, the puppy will cry at night if it can't see you. So even if it's in the bedroom, if the puppy can't see you, it's still gonna cry. So I saw somewhere online that someone recommended putting the crate on a chair next to the head of your bed so that the puppy can really see your face and if you wanna put your fingers through the crate, they can see you and feel you and touch you. And I thought that was a great idea because if the puppy can't be in bed with you because you wanna train it to be in the crate, at least it can still see you and so you won't have it whining all night. So I thought that was a really good idea. If you have a dog, if you've crate trained, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But then as well, it's been talking about kind of like the daily schedule of having a puppy, what it would look like. And it does seem like a lot of work. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It seems like having a baby or at least a toddler. So it is a, a big investment of time. And that is something that I am looking forward to, but it's also something I'm nervous about. So it's interesting to read this and kind of get an idea of what it would be like for when we get a dog and then also have an idea of what I should be doing so we have the best behaved dog on the block because I find that a lot of people's dogs are not super well behaved. Now, as far as what I've been watching, I've been watching Say Yes to the Dress. <laughs> so I used to watch this show 
when I was growing up with my mom. I would watch like every episode that was on TLC. They would do these big marathons and I'd watch all of them and I loved that show. So it's really funny to watch it now as an adult and see how they manufacture the drama and all of that. And the way I'm watching it is that they have about three or four seasons on Hulu, so I'm watching some of them on there. And it's just so funny to see some of this manufactured drama that they put in, as well as the price and cost of these gowns. People come in and they say that they have no budget and they're trying on $25,000 gowns. You're gonna wear it once, buy a house, <laughs> put the money towards a car, use it wisely. Now I'm not judging if you wanna spend a certain amount that's like reasonable, but a lot of these women come in with a $2,500 budget and Randy and the consultants look at them like they're crazy. Like how are you gonna get a dress for $25,000? The way you get a dress for $25,000 is you don't go to Kleinfeld. <laughs> That's the solution. So I got my dress for $800 and then I had some alterations on top of that. But I bought a sample because we got married pretty quickly and I didn't have time to order a dress in time. But there are a lot of places that you can get dresses for under $2,500. But on Say Yes to the Dress, that doesn't exist. If your budget is $2,500, they're gonna bring you a $2,800 dress and you just have to accept it. <laughs> And it's just so ridiculous the way that they create these budgets. It makes me laugh. And then of course you have the stories with the brides. I'm not gonna lie. Some of them, I get really emotional at the end when they do the little, ooh, like that little song at the end while they show the wedding. <laughs> I like those, I think they're really sweet. And some of the dresses that these women choose are gorgeous, but some of them are not. And I'm very surprised. I look at some of those dresses and I think to myself, no, 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 I would never ever choose that. And some of it is because I just don't like the style of the dress. I have kind of a specific taste when it comes to wedding dresses, but a lot of it is also that these wedding dresses are really immodest. It's like your wedding day. Everyone you know and love and respect is gonna be there and you're wearing a dress that's showing everything. On your wedding day, it's not supposed to be about how sexy you look. It's supposed to be how beautiful you look for your husband, for the person you're about to marry. And it's just always funny that these women come in and they're like, I wanna look like a sex bomb. <laughs> and then they choose something that works with that description and it's very funny, but it is a ton of fun to watch. I'm gonna be completely honest, but getting to look at that many beautiful dresses just from the comfort of your home is so much fun. And it's something that I really like doing. It's something I would do with girlfriends where I would invite them over and we would watch Say Us to the Dress together and kind of be like, boo, that dress is ugly or choose that one, it's gorgeous, you know? <laughs> Another thing that I have watched this past week was Braveheart. I watched the movie Braveheart with my husband. I'd never seen it before. And I'm not gonna lie to you, the thing that upset me about Braveheart is how historically inaccurate it is. Like at every turn, it drove me crazy. But the movie itself is good and worth watching, I would say. If you've seen either Say Us to the Dress or Braveheart, totally different sides of the spectrum, let me know in the comments below and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. So that's the first episode of The Scoop. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'm really excited to keep bringing this to you each week where we can just have like a casual conversation about different things I've been seeing, different things I've been reading, different things I've been thinking about and we can just kind of have a girl chat. Let me know in the comments what you guys have been thinking about this week. I'd love to hear. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please subscribe to my channel channel and blog if you haven't already. Head over to my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and follow me there. Hit that notification bell to get notified of all my new videos. Hit that like button. Please head over to classicallyabby.locals.com if you'd like to support my channel, see more of this content, and be part of our community. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!